Hello, Fiber friends, and welcome to another Tuesday tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about spinning wheel ratios. I'll explain what it's all about, show you how to find the ratio on your wheel, and then I'll talk about different reasons why understanding and adjusting ratios is important. Welcome to any new viewers who are joining me for the first time. I'm Evie and I make yarn. All right, let's get spinning. Have you ever heard someone refer to a spinning wheel as a fast spinner, a fast wheel? Well, it has to do with the ratios that the wheel uses between the drive wheel and the whorl. We will typically see a spinning wheel ratio written with two numbers separated by a colon in the middle. One of those ratio numbers represents the drive wheel, and the other ratio number represents the whorl. The way that we calculate and apply a spinning wheel ratio is going to be the same on any spinning wheel, whether it's a double drive scotch tension or Irish tension. I'm going to start out by using my Ashford Traditional as the example wheel. To help me keep track of the turns of the wheel, I've taken just a little fluff of wool and I'm tying it around one of the arms of my flyer. It's floopy, but that's okay. To measure the ratio of your spinning wheel, you want to count how many times your flyer turns for one full turn all the way around of your drive wheel. I find the easiest way to keep track of the turns of the wheel is to line up my footman, my treadle, and, and my flyer. So let's give this wheel one full revolution and count how many times the pink floof goes by. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six and we're not quite back up to the full revolution so we're gonna take it just like that and the floof is at the bottom so that counts for a half there are ways that you can play around with the ratio of a wheel if you have a whorl with different grooves with different diameters that's the purpose of that if you want to spin faster, you can put your drive band over the smaller diameter, and if you want to spin slower, you'll put the drive band over the larger diameter. These two whorls are for my Ashford Elizabeth. These whorls give me four different ratios that I can choose from because the grooves in the whorls are different diameters. This whorl will have a smaller number in comparison to one turn of the drive wheel. And this whorl will have a larger number in comparison to one turn of the drive wheel. If someone refers to a spinning wheel as a fast spinning wheel, it means that the difference between the drive wheel and the whorl is a larger ratio. So one treadle is going to give you more twist when you spin, as opposed to a larger whorl. When the ratio number is smaller, it means that one treadle is going to put less twist into your yarn. Why would you want more twist versus less twist? Why is it important that we understand these numbers and maybe have the equipment to change these numbers? The thinner the yarn, the more twist is required to keep the strands of the fiber together so that they don't slip and come apart. So a thinner yarn needs higher twist. I would use a smaller whorl for a thinner yarn. A thicker yarn needs less twist to hold together. And the more twist that you try to put into a thicker yarn, the more dense and just uncomfortable it starts to feel. I would want a slower spin if I'm making a thicker yarn, so I would use a larger whorl. This is the reason why in a lot of my tutorials for art yarn spinning, I say we want a slow spin. Use the largest whorl that you have available. 
When I'm spinning lace, for instance, I absolutely am going to use the tiniest whorl that I have available. In fact, I have a spinning wheel that I will be using to spin very, very thin, thin yarns, and it is called a Canadian production wheel. Canadian production wheels are known for their very fast spinning capacity, and that has to do with the size of the drive wheel, which is huge. I think it's probably, until you get to the great wheels, it's probably the biggest that you're going to find on a Saxony style wheel. And the whirl is very small. So let's grab that Canadian production wheel and see how it compares to an Ashford traditional at a six and a half to one ratio. I think the Canadian production wheel is gonna have a bigger number. You can see in comparison to the Ashford Traditional, this wheel is much larger. I had to back up my camera quite a distance to get the whole drive wheel even into the shot. So here we go, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, <laughs> yes, 19. There's a reason that it's called a production wheel. This wheel produces a lot of yarn very fast. It's almost so fast that I have trouble keeping up with her, but uh, it's very exciting. Another reason to choose a faster ratio over a slower ratio is staple length. If you're working with a longer staple, it doesn't need as much twist to give you a yarn with integrity. If you're working with a shorter staple, it needs more twist to hold all those fibers together. Understanding the twist in your yarn is a very complex subject and I will absolutely be making more tutorial videos explaining all of those things to do with twist. But understanding the ratios you can achieve with your spinning wheel is the basics of understanding twist. Leave a comment down below to let me know what kind of spinning wheel you have and what your spinning wheel ratio is. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to help you out. I'll see you next time. Happy spinning.